Kansas City Chiefs are in the lead. This weekend saw the Bulls take on the Sharks in one of the most amazing Curry Cup finals we've seen of late. Loftus Fastfelt was a buzz, with the game starting well. Which is also great because there wasn't any other notable sports that was on this this weekend. Okay, fine, I'll, I'll talk about it. This weekend we played the third Soweto Derby of this season. And this time we rallied behind Gavin Hunt, pulling out a 3-0 win just like I said we would last week. Fine, but if I say it enough, maybe they'll believe me. Okay, fine. Usually, the Casico is a joyous event. Form goes out the window, and it's, and it's for anyone to win. But in Soweto Super Bowl number 172, Orlando Pirates beat us 2-1 and won the match as, as they've done in 170 and 171. Let me start from the beginning. It's half past two. Been nervous all day, and finally I get to see that the lineups are announced. At that point I knew this was going to be a long day. Let me take you back. So, the last time we put out a winning side, this is how we set up. And the time before that, another win, this was our setup. Right? Team set up to attack. Creative players. Ngobo Mashiani and Zuma finding places in the starting lineup. Clearly, we were going out to go and win matches. Now, this is the team that we fielded the last time we lost to Pirates. And this is the team that we played this weekend. I know, Gavin, you really seem to value experience. And I also know that the Chiefs players, the more experienced ones, should be aging like a fine wine. But no, actually they're aging like milk. Fresh in the beginning, even a little after you open them at the other teams. At this point, you need to add a little sugar to your potu before adding them to the game because they cannot be trusted to win games on their own. Yes, I do put sugar in my potu. You can tell by my English. Speaking of cows, boy did Gavin lose his herd into Orlando Stadium. Judging by the quality of the pitch, you would have thought that bringing in a bunch of cows to trim it a little would have been the right move, with the grass being really long and thick. But in this case, our defenders weren't up for the game at all. To those who are new to the show, this is your time to like, comment, share, and subscribe. But for those who have been watching me for a couple of weeks, you will know exactly how I feel about our defense. Gavin decided to play a defensive high line for much of this match. The logic is true. If there's one thing we know about Pirates is that they're going to try play balls over you and get past your defenders with speed on the wings. This is done so Pule or Lodge can take advantage of the defending. And take advantage Lodge did, scoring from some horrendous defending. A while ago I spoke about our armed response approach to games and making situations that are harmless into goal providing opportunities for the other team. And this is exactly what happened this time. Two Chiefs players decided to attack the same ball, even though they outnumbered the Pirates players at the back. That's one mistake. Lodge makes a horizontal run past the defenders and behind them. And at no point does somebody say, there's your man, or track the runner. Mistake number two. And thirdly, when playing a high line, it's super important for you guys to stay in line. So when you look across the other side of the field and you see Zulu playing Lodge on side, you realize that again, Communication was lacking. No communication and no plan. It's like you're coaching a bunch of under sevens. And don't be fooled by all of the last dish tackles. If not for Pirates' bad decision making in the final third, maybe this match has a whole lot more goals in Pirates' column. Let's look further up the pitch. Nobo is useless on the wing. You need to push him up the pitch so that he can be closer to Nurkovic. As Nurkovic was playing as well as he did, he had to drop back too far away from danger places. And if you just move Ngoba up a little bit, Nurkovic can win balls and knock them down for Ngoba in dangerous positions, as we had done in the matches that we'd won previously. The moment you see Reeve Frostler's name on a team sheet, you should know that we've given up on playing soccer for that game. His name should actually be Reeve Crossler, because we're only going to be focused on long balls towards Nurkovic and crossing. 
crossing to Nurkovich, crossing to Blom, crossing to Agbe, crossing the River Jordan, crossing over with John Edwards, crossing the... The game needed a change. And seven minutes after Mashiani came on, we won a penalty. Can you believe it? Maybe not pumping the ball all the way up to Nurkovic and hoping he does something. And actually putting the ball down can reap the benefits. This is what we've been watching. And brings a lot of questions as to why Mashiani did not start in the first place. Now, this is where soccer can be so cruel. The football gods have a few rules. If you have a lot of chances early in the match and you don't take them, you're going to lose to a late goal. If a commentator says that you're playing well, that's going to be the start of you playing badly for the rest of the match. And if you win a penalty and your penalty taker is on the field but you choose to bring someone else on to take the penalty, you are going to miss it. And that is a lesson that Nurkovic learned. Now I get it, he was playing well, he got the captain's armband, felt a sense of responsibility, and also doesn't have a derby goal to his name. Him stepping up made sense. But a rule was broken, and in our case, not only did we miss the penalty, we also missed the open goal follower. I mean, Gezana hit the top corner just from the other side. Shout out to Caroso. He scored later in the match, and we know we should have taken that penalty. Could have had two that game, and would have had a draw. But it's football. We can't predict what's going to happen. It wasn't all doom and gloom. We did play well. We had our chances. Manyama couldn't capitalize on a blistering counter-attack that resulted in a cross that couldn't be turned over and the bumbling Pirates defense gave him just a little window to get the ball in and he couldn't finish. Nurkovic also had a great ball getting in behind the Pirates defense but he was rushed for the volley and couldn't put it into the back of the net. So we are creating chances. We're being held back by schoolboy errors at the back and losing focus in games we need to win. Gavin, play positive. Let the boys go and create. Don't stifle them by putting them out on the wing or on the bench. Take the experienced players out of the game. Yes, we know they have pedigree that people have spoken about, but these youngsters have been performing. And this negative football that we're trying to play cannot be sustained for full matches. We can't park the bus. The best form of defense is attack in our case. The previous matches have shown us, the ones we've won were games where, through whatever reason, those players weren't playing and you were forced to play an attacking brand of football. This match also teaches us that Kayser's brown bags can be used to get the ref. And you did amazing, sir. You did everything you could. But at this level, just know Ivan's got a brown bag going to his nyanga too. Like, share, subscribe and comment. I really want to hear from you guys. Kosi for life.